Welcome everyone to Gamer Mail. Today we've got a ton of news. I'm talking more 50th anniversary AMD products, next gen Ryzen ABU specs, the GTX 1650 launch, and a slew of new Intel chips. But first, I'm officially announcing the Gamer Meld Reward Program CPUs through History Edition. Well, I announced it a little yesterday, but now I'm telling everyone. The program is really simple, as a thank you to my supporters, every three months of patronage to the Gamer Meld Patreon. $5 patrons will get a pretty sweet gift. I have the rest of the year mostly planned out and they're all CPUs that made a difference in history with the first being an AMD Athlon 64X2, the chip that brought multi-core processing to the masses. And you can get it signed by me upon request. Also, if we reach 100 patrons by the end of the year, I'll move on to the next edition. To get in on the first gift, make sure to have your patronage before the 1st of May by following the link in the description. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have more 50th anniversary AMD news. Originally reported by video cards, the company is releasing a 50th anniversary Radeon 7 GPU, and it definitely looks pretty sweet if I do say so myself. They only have the box to show off, but as you can see, the card is getting a coat of red. Not only that, but they shared the first images of the already reported 2700X 50th Anniversary Edition CPU, and I'm assuming it'll be gold by this. According to video cards, the processors will be available on the 29th. Next up are some leaked specs for AMD's next-gen APUs. The specs were originally posted on Chappelle's forum by the same poster who leaked images of the Ryzen 3 3200G APU last week. Unfortunately, the new post was taken down, but that doesn't mean much, except that he likely got in a bit of trouble about it. Luckily, others were able to get screenshots beforehand, and it gives us some really important details about the Ryzen 5 3400G and Ryzen 3 3200G. For one, if this is correct, AMD actually soldered the heat spreader similar to their Ryzen desktop CPUs. That can help with heat dissipation and ultimately overclocking, to which the user did report higher clocks. With that said, while this is technically the 3000 series CPUs, they're based on AMD's 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture, not the upcoming 7 nanometer one. As far as overclocking, he was able to get the 3400G to an all-core overclock of 4.25 GHz at 1.38 volts and the 3200G to 4.3 GHz at the same voltage. Keep in mind that both processors are 4-core CPUs, but the Ryzen 5 model has SMT enabled, so that model gets 8 threads. Really, while it's not disappointing, it's about what I expected from the slight die shrink. Speaking of expectations, NVIDIA has officially launched their GTX 1650, and it's pretty much exactly what was leaked. The GPU comes with 896 CUDA cores, 4GB of GDDR5 on a 128-bit bus, and it comes with a base clock of 1485MHz and a boost of 1665. It also has a decent 75 watt TDP and comes in at $149.99. Like the other 1600 models, there isn't a reference model so clocks and specs will vary from card to card, but this is more or less the baseline. Along with this, Nvidia also announced a slew of notebooks powered by their new 1600 series of GPUs. And of course, this all officially confirms the 1600 branding of their non-RTX GPUs. What the hell are you thinking? I mean, we already pretty well knew it was a 1650 from a ton of leaks, but now it's official. Worst naming scheme I could think of. Lastly for today, Intel announced a ton of new processors from desktop to mobile. The desktop lineup is an expansion of their 9th gen CPUs and basically fills in all the gaps with slightly lower clock, cheaper CPUs that won't overclock. And then there's the F processors that lack an integrated GPU yet cost the same. Basically, don't buy an F processor unless you want to get f***ed by Intel. Okay, some are reporting higher overclocks without the iGPU enabled, but it's still frustrating. Next are the T processors, which are nothing but much lower power and therefore less powerful CPUs. Lastly, we have the company's new 9th Gen Mobile H series processor lineup, and I have to say it's pretty impressive. They provide support for up to 128GB of DDR4 memory, Wi-Fi 6, and some of Intel's new products. The processors range from 4 cores and 8 threads to 8 cores and 16 threads. What's really impressive here is that the i9-9990HK can actually get all the way up to 5 gigahertz. I mean, seriously, that's a big deal. And no, it's not an all-core overclock, but even a single core is nice. Of course, we'll have to wait until actual notebooks come out to test thermals and wattage, to which the 45-watt TDP for all the chips really means nothing because it's based on their base clock anyway. I definitely will say that I'll try and get my hands on one and test out and do a video. Here's to hoping.
So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for slightly cheaper Intel chips or ready for new Ryzen APUs? And if you liked the video, definitely make sure to subscribe. We're so close to 100,000 subs. And as always, have a great day.